Okay, pretty cool. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So yeah, I wanted to kind of just walk you through this process, and then like I said, I'm recording it, and then yeah. that way other people. <laughs> we have our main languages that we have courses for, but people like learning Polish or like you know, Azerbaijani, whatever. Like, yeah. um, but the same principles apply. So I kind of wanted to show that process and then um what you can make what you can maybe do is um take the recording show it to your son and then have him do the leg work but basically i'm going to show you what i would do if i were learning polish and kind of getting the basic breakdown ahead of time and figuring things out for myself Perfect. so i'm going to show you my screen and then i'm going to show you the the algorithm here so okay you can see my screen yeah yes i can all right, cool. So, um, all right, so phonology is basically the study of a sound system as opposed to phonetics, which is just the study of speech sound in general. Um, so the phonology page, what it's doing is it's explaining what the vowel sounds are and the consonant sounds and then the kind of stress patterns. I wouldn't worry about stress patterns. What we're gonna focus here is vowels and consonants. Okay. So I'll give you a quick primer on what a vowel and consonant actually is but a vowel is, a, is basically when air flow leaves your mouth unobstructed, right? And therefore, the quality of the sound is going to be determined by the position of your tongue in your mouth. Okay. Um, and I talked about this before with you, but yes. if I go from E to O, what this is showing here in this vowel diagram, this is my upper teeth in the front of my mouth, okay. is my tongue going back from E like that. Okay. And then it's going down to this ah here. E ah. Okay. okay. So what's going on here is these vowels for Polish um, are your one one way of saying is when you're learning Polish, your job is going to be let me hit these vowel sounds with precision. Imagine them like darts, like points on a dartboard. So each time you say this, say the word, you want to say the right um, positioning. Okay. Um, there's kind of two issues there. One is when you're saying a word or when you hear a word, are you hearing the right vowel sounds? You know, which ones are they using? Um, and then when you're saying it yourself, are you getting close enough to the target, right? That it's being perceived as that vowel sound. Uh, so first thing we'll do is kind of break down these vowel sounds. Um, so they're saying it consists of six monophthongs and two nasal diphthongs. Monophthong is just, um, what, what that means is your tongue's in a fixed position while you say the vowel. So e, e, a, a, u, u. These are just like your tongue's in a fixed position. Okay. Diphthong means your tongue is moving from one position to the next while you're saying it. So let's see if we can find their diphthongs. Um, Uh, well, I'll get that later, but an example in English is um, when I say <coughs> ow, like in now. Yes. I'm starting with the ah, and I'm ending in a ooh, ow. Okay, in Polish, that's pretty similar to that. There's a funny, you know, they have different, um, they have a couple of different letters, and there's an A, a funny A, um, that does that same sort of ow. I mean, I don't know if it's exactly the same as it is in English, but there's definitely that. Yeah, that, that, that movement thing, right. Yes, exactly. So... So, so, so there's a couple of things we want to make sure we have cleanly kind of organized and separated in our head. You have, um, you have the, um, let me just maybe I make a, visualize it on the keynote here. All right, so there's a couple of things we want to, we want to kind of have disentangled in our, in our heads here. Um, one is it's a bit bigger. All right. One is the uh, Polish Polish sounds. Mm -hmm. All right, and. and there's going to be the uh, Polish um, orthography, which is basically the, the writing system. So they're going to have their own system for um, mapping their sounds. 
Uh, and then we also have the English orthography in our English sounds. Yes. So a bunch of things get mixed up here, which, which when people are learning. Uh, one is when there's gonna be a sound, for example, this sound doesn't exist in English, this ooh sound. So when this sound comes, when we hear it as an English speaker, we're not gonna hear the sound. We're gonna hear an English sound that sounds close to it. So maybe we're like, or we replace it, right? right. Uh, that's one thing. Um, but then it gets, the, the, it gets even more complicated because then what happens is this Polish sound is written in Polish orthography using Roman letters that we also use in our English orthography. So inevitably there's going to be, you know, so for example, I know, I don't know Polish at all, but I do know that like I was in Poland and I went to Krakow yep. and you know, uh, this, this symbol here, I associate to the R sound, but if I recall correctly in Polish, it wasn't a R, it was a R sound, so it was K, right? Yes. And then this symbol right here, I associate with a W, but in Polish it's a V, you know? So we're, we're all of a sudden we're just confusing and crossing all these wires all the time. Um, what you'll see on this phonology page is something called IPA, which is basically like, if you have this symbol here, it always means the same sound, no matter what language it is. Okay. You know, eh is the same eh from um, bread, and it may it'll show up in Polish. And, you know, in English, you spell it E-A in bread. In Polish, it might be spelled like, you know, like a umlaut or some kind of crazy thing. Exactly. But the point is that that's all orthography. All that matters is the sound itself. You know, right. so that's all we care about is can you hear the sound? If you're blind and you couldn't read or anything, would you be able to hear the sound properly and would you be able to produce the sound properly? Right, 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 exactly. Cool, so now how do we figure out how to produce it? And this is what I was recommending you, you kind of put your son to the task to, uh, or you can do it yourself too if you, if you find it interesting. Um, let me just close these things. Um, uh, okay, so I'm gonna make, start making this sheet for you and I'll share it to you. Um, but I like this exercise. I find it really useful for um, for organizing sounds in your head. Is um, this. all right? So what we're gonna do is take each of these um, sounds. I'm gonna do this. Make a double screen here. All right, and we're gonna give it its own column. So we have the E. All right, um, we have the E, and then we have the uh, this, this, this A sound. And when you put things in these side brackets, that just, a, that just means that you're referring to the sound and not the letter. Okay. That's just a convention, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we have this A, uh, we have U, and then, um, Oh, yeah. uh, and then, ooh, and then uh, this aw, oops, this sound here. So you know, yeah, e a a u aw, and then there seems to be this other thing here as well. This um u sound which I recognize from Russian, so I don't speak Russian, but I know it's in it. I'm not too good at this sound yet, but it will be like a uh, type sound. Right. And then um, what, what we wanna do is make um, <coughs> a list of, list of um, words that has the sound in it, right? Okay. And then when you have this list of words, and then you can have your husband or, or another Polish speaker just read through them. What happens is when you, re, um, when you repeat, when you repeat, in vowels will be rhyming words usually, when you repeat the rhyming word over and over again, um, it'll start to train your brain to listen for that sound because then the, right. the repetition and in different contexts kind of frames your mind around hearing it in all the different contexts. So once again, I don't know Polish, so how do I start doing that? What I do is this, this is the kind of hack here. Each of these links goes to its own dedicated page on Wikipedia. 
Oh so God. this bow here of the E, for example, is an easy right. example. Um, when I open that up, um, again. Uh, sorry, this um, screen share software blocks my blocks my screen. Oh, here you go. There you go. Boom. All right. So I open that up. Um, then what you would do is when it does it, it, it tells you where it is, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you might, you might not worry about that for now, but you know, you, the valve chart thing's pretty good and knows the visualization that this is the top front of your mouth. So it's e, and then, you know, another sound like this other one we had uh, is, a, is in between this and ooh. So your tongue is like e, ooh. you know, that's what that is. Yeah. But right now we focus on the E here. And then what it does in the Wikipedia page is pretty cool is it, it tells you all the languages that are known that have that sound in it. Cool. You know, so it's, um, so you can look for an English, for example, we do a control F search English, and then it will show me the English, uh, an English word that has it. So free, for example, wow. you know, uh, but then um, what I'm going to look for is where's the Polish show up, right? And then it'll be this word, all right? Yeah. And then, um, what I can do then is put this word here and then now it's linked should be linked yet and then this is what the link uh, oh wait no sorry that's not where I want to go you know, sometimes it'll have the audio here which this one does mich mich all right so that so that's what that is that's not an easy vowel um, but another thing you can do is um, if they don't have the word uh, the other link I'll give you here is um, oops, do do that. the other link I'll give you here is um, something called Forvo, and Forvo is a pronunciation dictionary. So if I search the word "mish" here, it'll find it for Polish "pl," and then I can hear it as random people saying it. "Mish," and if I click on it, I can hear two other pronunciations. "Mish." Niche. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, so, so why is that important? Because once again, you don't want to trust your own intuition of how it's pronounced based on the spelling of it. Right. You know, so you want to confirm it by actually hearing a Polish person say it. So forvo.com will be your thing. So you can just kind of copy this and then, um, and then um, link the word to that. And then yeah. that, that way you can just kind of double check yourself. Um, yeah, so that so that so that gives you your your kind of canonical words. So what you want to do then is speak to your husband and speak to somebody, and then now that you have, because the thing is, if you if you show him, it's it's kind of obviously the vowels, but when we get into the other consonant sounds, it'll be more difficult. He won't recognize the symbols and like, what are you talking about. Um, so you have to give him the canonical word. So it's like, all right, give me words that have the e sound for me, and he's like, oh, and then you know it becomes a game, right? right. When you get a couple of them, you hear them over and over again. When you keep this spreadsheet, I always encourage people to kind of have it at hand. And then next time you're at like, you know, in-laws, you know, dinner, the in-laws are watching TV. And then you're kind of looking out, especially for the, the sounds you struggle with. When you hear a word that has it, you're like, oh, is that a word? You get your husband repeat it. You're like, ah. And then like, you know, you add it. You're, you're making it you're like collect as many words as you can that have this sound. So I'll do it again for maybe two more. So I get this, 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 um. Um, S sound, for example. Uh, once again, control F, Polish. All right, and then it's 10, so I guess the same English too. 10. 10, 10. All right, and then that is that sound. I can then uh, go back, take this, go to Forvo, and just make sure I got it right. And you can choose the language here because obviously a lot of a lot of languages that have ten in it. But here's a Polish one. Ten. Ten. All right. And then um, yeah. And then once again, I can just keep that there for reference in case I need it. So now let's just do it for this one vowel sound. So it looks like um, the only monophthong vowel that does not exist in English really is this. Um, I. This one does exist in English. We have it for words like dog, but it might be usually it's a little bit slightly different pronounced in Polish. Mm. So, uh, 
I'm gonna go just see how it's pronounced in Polish. Click on here. Search Polish. All right, this cult thing. I'm gonna take KLT, go to Forvo. Got. Got. Yeah, so it's basically, it's basically the same tongue position as uh, the all and dog. Um, other details you want to pay attention to when it comes to language is there's the tongue position that determines the vowel, but there's also um, the length of time that you're actually saying that sound. So, for example, uh, got. Um, so got is is um. It's going to be a similar vowel positioning as uh, the uh, aw and caught in English, like caught. Was, um, but we extend it much longer in English. So it's like, oh, so I caught a couple of things, right? Whereas here's a like, cut. So I, I'm noticing there's a difference. They're like, ah, they say that much shorter, cut, and their syllables are crisper, more staccato. Oh, right. right? right. So those, little, those little details you want to pay attention to as well. Um, but I'm just going to put the, the cut here as well. Once again, no, I don't know what any of these things mean. I'm just kind of, I'm just. I actually do know what they mean, um, yeah. but it's so helpful to hear this because it's hard. I, it really is hard for me to hear, um, but I, yeah. I'm, I think I mentioned we're flying to Poland tonight. So this is actually going to be so helpful because this is going to be what we're going to do for fun while we're in Poland is build out this spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I love, uh, I, have, I have this for every language and it's just kind of like a fun um, fun exercise and um, all right and then we'll do the last one here this uh, this thing so once again look at the spelling here I would have no idea how to pronounce this right. uh, but um, when I see the IPA I do know because it'll be like a mish right and that's what this is kind of telling me here so I'm gonna but I want to actually mimic a real person so I mish 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 all right so um, and then well, it's three pronunciations, so I want to hear different versions of it. Mish. 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 Right? And like, they're not all the exact same. It's slight subtle differentiation, but the way sounds work is, is kind of like there's like a, like a kind of, uh, I, I imagine like a circle around the sound on the, so you go look at the vowel chart, and it's like anything that gets caught up in this radius here, your ear is going to categorically perceive as a, E. But if it drifts over into this category, e -ish, mish -ish, that is this one here. See what right. I'm saying? So you want to have those boundaries cleanly separated um, in your um, for that target language. And what will commonly happen is, you know, things will be moved over to the English version, or the o and o and all will be kind of jumbled together in the head or whatever. So you just want to make sure everything's very cleanly separated. Um, cool. We'll just finish that up with vowels. Um, so I have my mish here. Um, oh yeah, here's the actual word. And then here's the uh, link. Cool. All right. And you don't have to make a link for anything, but it's just kind of good to have as a reference point. And then um, we'll just build it out by writing. Um, all right, and then um, so you can fill out the rest of these. These rest is pretty straightforward, but yeah. so far on vowels, you have any questions? No, that makes sense. All right, great. So, all right, now they said they have two nasal diphthongs here, so I want to talk about nasality for a bit, but I want to find out what they actually are. Um, and you know, if, as you get to learn these things more. Um, if you start to geek out on these things, when you read this page, there actually is useful information here. So, for example, um, this, this is kind of fun, what the phoneticians have noted about these sounds. Like, there's no complete agreement about the realization of an eh between soft consonants. You're like, oh, you know, at first it doesn't mean anything to you, but then when you know what a soft consonant is and then you start to listen, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, sometimes in these words, there's not exactly the same kind of thing. So, they're debating whether or not to make a whole new sound category for it or whatever. Okay. Um, rounding is, um, so when it comes to a vowel thing, so I'll give you a quick thing on vowels. So I mentioned before, vowels is when airflow leaves the mouth. And there are three features that determine um, a vowel or to make one vowel distinct from another. 
First, we already mentioned that is a position of your tongue kind of shaping the oral cavity. The other one that shapes your cav oral cavity is your, um, your lips. So your lips can be spread like they are an E or they can be round like they are an O uh, or anywhere in between. So they say there's not a complete agreement on rounding for cot. So when I heard that woman say it earlier, she said cot, and it wasn't that much rounding, whereas I could, if I said cot, then it's a, you know, when I say cot, then I'm doing much more rounding and that's kind of a distinction there. So another detail to pay attention to, both looking at people with your eyes, but also listening is how much of their lips going like this versus this. Okay. You know? Um, so that's something to pay attention to. Uh, but anyways, I'm just I'm trying to find what these um, nasal vowels are. Okay, here they are. So, uh, and all. All right. Yeah. So, I'm going to um, copy these over. Uh, all. All right, so the third one is a nasality. What's going on in nasality? If I can just show you um, an image of a speech organ. Here's mine. Um, all right, so what's going on is, um, is the um, airflow is coming up from your windpipe called your, your, um, your trachea. At the top of it, you have your thing called glottis. And then you have your, you know, your esophagus and your trachea, right? Your air pipe and your food pipe. And then they come out and then air leaves out of your mouth. But there's another place that air leaves out of your face and that is your nose. Right. Uh, so you have this thing here called the velum, the soft palate, which is moving. Um, when we speak English, we're basically constantly more or less contracting it backwards so it blocks the airflow through the nose and it goes through the mouth entirely. So when I say, ah, uh, I'm actually flexing this thing here and blocking it. But if I relax it, instead of saying, ah, uh, I relax it, air will start to pass through both my mouth and my nose. And it sounds like this, ah. Uh, You know, so that's what nasalization is. Uh, so back to the Polish, when you see a little tilde over it in the IPA, then what that means is that I'm making my tongue position for this one from 10, 10, eh, eh. But then I'm, I'm uh, relaxing my velum so that air goes through my nose at the, at the same time. And um, one kind of way you can practice this, Tissue. You kind of know if you're doing it properly is like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, it's gonna work, let me see. And that's no, not gonna work, sorry. But like, you can, um, you know, you can, you can kind of feel air from your nose. So it's like, uh, uh, it's very slight, but you know, you're allowing air to come so you can feel it. Um, so I, I, what I do when I practice these oral vowels is I say, uh, eh from 10 and I'm all eh, and then I try to make, I try to keep my tongue fixed in the same position and then nasalize it. So, eh, eh. are you able to do that? Eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, you, so you have it there, yeah. So you want to, you, you practice that there. I'm gonna see if I can find a video on how to do nasalization somewhere I can send you. But that's it, right? So you, you actually had it, um, but then there's like managing the airflow and being comfortable with it or whatever. Right. We actually do this sound in English depending on um, um, your accent. So for example, you know, you think about a kid when they're like, they don't want to clean their room and they're like, meh, right? And like that kind of thing. So a lot of times we have an A-N, we'll, nail it, we'll nasalize it instead of saying man, we'll say man, we'll say meh. And that's the same sound here. Like, okay, eh. that's helpful. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then the on, same thing. We put our o from cot, o, and release our vowel, o, o, and that's what that is. That's, just, that's also in, um, in, in French, bon. We say bonjour, bon. That's an on there. 
So let's just see if we can hear some examples of these. We got the WYSI, and we got the, uh, once again, when I look at these, my mind is spelling, I'm like, oh, WYSI and WAS. Everybody's <laughs> WYSI and WAS. But of course, that's not how it's going to be said. So let me go and check it on Forvo. Venusa. Oh, well. Venusa. All right, so Venusa. 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 All right, so it's kind of Venusa. That sound effect going on there? Yeah. Let me try this. Uh, wash. Vonge. 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 Yeah, so it's pretty cool because it's a. Uh, this is totally not how I would have spelled this in my head. Uh, so, but you know, it gets back to what I was saying before. Like, there's a, there's a, there would be a lot of unpacking. I guarantee you, there are people out there who are Americans learning Polish, who are pronouncing this something like wash or bash or why you know all different variations. But the only reason they're making that mistake is because of the spelling, right? Exactly. And this, the sounds themselves are very different. So um, let me just put that in there, make sure you have that. All right, great. Now, just a quick question to you. Now that you've kind of seen these all laid out, um, with the Polish you know, what are some words you think would, we should try to populate each category. Um, so I'll just finish it up real quick with the ah uh, and the ooh. We got tak and boom. All right, what are some words you think have E in it? Uh, least, L-I-S-T, I think, would have that sound. Okay, cool, and then how about for E? Eh? Eh, um, Ten. I can't believe I'm blanking so hard on this. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty difficult, right? Yes. Um, I don't know. I have to think about it. Yeah, great. So, cool. So now you have now you have your mission, right? So yes, your Polish talk. Listen, to your husband talk on the phone or whatever, and then just keep it out for an et, and then you're like, ah, and then as soon as you have a word, boom. Now you yeah. can kind of. Put it to your list. So generating it out of nothing is difficult, but now recognizing it in situations is where it's going to help. Yes. And then, are there any of these vowels here that you, you, they're kind of surprised to you, where you're like, I, I don't know, I never recognize these as being their own unique sound, or, or all these pretty clear. What's in? What's the? Tell me the one in D. Uh, as a ooh, so from boom. So the, the one in H, I know for sure, because that's a hard one for me, but I know it. I mean, I know that it's there, that, that um, but tell me how G sounds again. Oh, that one's a, uh, uh, uh. uh. So let's just go to the example. Venge. Ven. So is that, I would try to say. I think that's probably the one that surprises me the most because I think I confuse it with the e eh in ten or the owl in the funny a one. I think I confuse it either with what's in H or what's in I think uh, A. Column A. No, column B. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, well, that makes sense. So from a, from a physical point of view, that makes sense. Why? Because column B, the A, is the same tongue position as this one. Right. And this one is the only other nasal vowel. Right, so, right. 
as what goes on. Like when you just when they share features, your brain will kind of gravitate to what you know that's similar. Yeah. Uh, but now you're making his own category. So right. what seems super useful is when you start building out words that are like this. Um, I'm not sure, it, it, it might not exist, but likely not exist. There's things called minimal pairs. So there'll be words that are the exact same except for one sound. So, right. you know, venge, but then it might be like a venge and a vige, right. right? And then hearing all three of those words next to each other and be like, these are all different words right. uh, is a really great training. Um, but even just having a list of words here, list of words here, and then going down and going back and forth between them is, does, does the work of kind of separating those two categories in your mind. Yes. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. All right. Great. Now I want to do the same thing here, but to start you off for consonants. Um, and then that's why I make sure. All right. So most consonants in most languages overlap. So for example, ma, pa, ba, fa, ba, those are hard. Na, ta, da, um, sa, za are going to be easy. The rest of these are going to be um, kind of going to be easy. So let's, let's just kind of isolate the ones that might be a bit tricky. This one's not that hard, but just good to practice it. The ts and the z. Um, the alveolar tap. The big one. And then uh, these guys for sure. I think the other thing that I find really hard um, is that when the, like alone, like a sp, you know, SP wouldn't be hard, but when it's an SP with an RZ right after it, that's super yeah. hard. Well, it's hard for me to hear, but also hard for me to say. Yeah, yeah. so I'll tell you the, the basic technique for how to um, train those things. It's just, a, so when it comes to like a cluster of consonants, and it's just a question of speed training, so if you're able to pronounce each of the individual sounds in isolation, okay. uh, but not in combination, then what it means to pronounce something in combination is to say them fast, right? So if you can say, buh, 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 say those separately, fine. Then what you're saying is that I just can't say them in the second the way I need to for the speech. So right. what you do is you practice, um, you know, you, you go as fast as you can while keeping it accurate. And then you gradually try to close the gap between okay. sounds. So we'll, we'll, we'll get a word at some point, and then I'll, I'll walk you through that exercise. And then, okay. yeah, the more you run the exercise, the, the quicker you'll get over those humps. Um, and then these palletized things are going to be interesting as well. Kia, kia, and kia. All right, and then. Once again, you can have, um, you can either go through yourself or have your, have your son go through and add the rest of these sounds here. <coughs> we'll just focus on the ones that are not going to be really in English. So this, this is just pretty easy, but same process as the vowels. I'm just going to open this, control F Polish, and uh, find my sample word. I got this so thing. And yeah. Go. Oh, that's Vietnamese. Yeah. So. So. All right. So there you go. So, so can you think of any other words that have a uh a, a t in it? Um, um. So. Kotz, K-O-C. Uh, All right, so that's uh, Kotz. Uh, All right, cool. Uh, so. So, Kotz. All right, great. Um, and then the, the voice version. So same tongue movement, but now you're putting your, so Z, Z. Search my Polish one. On. Zvon. Zvon. Can you say that one? Zvon. All right, great. You got that one good. All right, how are you with the uh, R sound? R. 
All right, so you can do that one fine. Um, all right, now these ones be a, be a bit trickier. Uh, Retroflex. All right, so apparently there's like, you're looking at dialectal differences here as well. So it's something to pay attention to, that this sound here is gonna be apparently doing something different compared to standard versus Southeastern Cuyahian dialects or Subarki dialect. It is true that sometimes when I say things, my husband says like, oh, you sound like you're from the countryside or, you know, whatever, because it's th that same kind of thing. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, so cool, let's, let's see how this, Chess. 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 Can you say that? Chess. All right, cool. It's just a little quick thing on a retroflex, so you know what that's referring to. Um, let's go back to our speech organ. Well, I wonder if I can have what Peter says about retroflex. Yeah, so basically, um, like it says here, you're basically you're curling is when you're kind of curling the tongue. Um, so uh, so if I was saying this is an English speaker, I say chus and I'm making like a ch sound, but it's not. It's, it's actually a little bit further back in the mouth and it's and you're more bunched up in the tongue. So it's like uh, chus chus. I'm doing like a, instead of a so instead of a chus chus, I'm doing chus 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 chus. chus. Yeah, so that's something just, just once again back to what we're saying before. We want to be clear on which which overlaps and which does not overlap. Right. So the, the CH and the CZ are similar but not exactly the same. They're different physical movements. So you know you want to be able to make sure you do you want to make sure you're doing something different. Okay. For, for each one, you know that way you know you're doing something. Um, and then we'll just do the DZ one as well. Uh, you might do this one. Well, let's make some kind of distinction here that is. Okay, I think it's um, a, a dialect thing as well going on here. So this one is. Jam. 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 Yeah, because you can see the Z in gem is different than the than the Z in the uh, really, the Yeah, so they, they indicate it. It's being different here. Yeah. So jam. This is gonna be the same thing as a chess, but you're pointing a voice to it. Chess, gem. Same um yeah. uh -huh. it's the same tongue positioning, just one you're vibrating your vocal cords, jam, and the other one you're not. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's the same thing for, so T and D is that way. So if I say two and do, the only difference is that one of them, my vocal cords are vibrating, duh, whereas in T is not. So that's a, uh, same thing, but one's vocal. You, you, if you see it on the uh, chart, it says uh, voiceless and voiced. So P and B are voicing pairs, F and V voicing pairs, S, Z. Right, so that's another way of kind of organizing things in your mouth is by knowing like, ah, it's the same sound, it's the same tongue position, but one's voice and one's voiceless. All right, um, cool. I'll do. Um, are there any particular? I'll give you one more, one more kind of uh, thing to close the circuit here. I go to a thing called Wiktionary. Wiktionary is a free dictionary of like all the words. So. Um, for example, if I put in Zvon, it'll uh, bring up that word for Polish, and then it'll give the pronunciation, and then it'll have those IPA symbols there. Wow. Yeah, so now I know it's a Zvon, Zvon. Um, is there any, uh, so is there any word that you particularly have trouble pronouncing or has a sound that you struggle with? 
Yes, um, but let me let me look it up real quick because I'm not so I'm not otherwise going to spell it properly. Um, Um, so it's spelled P R Z mm -hmm. E and then S with a funny thing over it. S C I E. -R. Sorry? Which funny thing is it? No, point number two or point number three? Um two. And then C I A. Spelling here. Um, do, do, do. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Not, yes. Okay. C I E R A D. And then an, the funny Polish L with the line through it and O. P R C E S. O? Ends in an O. Yeah. All right. Great. So this is our uh, breakdown of it. So I'm gonna just put this here. I'll make a new column here. I'll just call it like a trouble words. Yeah. You know, and then you can just have like English, um, Polish, and then uh, yeah, IPA. Mm -hmm. So the Polish version is here. The IPA version is here. Uh, these, I like to break it out per syllable. So they use, they use, uh, we'll, we'll see what it looks like in a second, how, how I hear it pronounced, but um, I like to just have it bunched out per syllable. Yep. And then that way, and I'll, and I'll walk you through the process of Pronouncing it. All right. So first, um, what's it mean? Sheet, like a bed sheet. All right. Oh, the sheet. All right. And then, um, all right. So let's get this bad boy and then put it in the Forbo dictionary. Prześcieradło. 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 All right. So, is da, 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 da. so there's four different syllables. So I want to break this down into its component pieces. Okay. And then, so think about it. You have a word broken down into syllables, broken down into phonemes. Okay. Right. So if you can pronounce each phoneme, then you just need to be able to combine them into a syllable. If you can pronounce each syllable, then you need to combine it into a sentence, and then you're good. Right. So. It's just movements. So this first one here is the shush, right? So um, this this symbol here, we mentioned, uh, we didn't go over, so we'll just look up what this is real quick. Um, alveolo palatal fricative. So um, let's get another, so it's gonna be the same from Shuba here. Shruba. 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 All right, so let's put that on our list here. All right, so we know that it's going to have uh, this uh, in it. And let's see. Like, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is that like an English SH sound? Yeah, so I want to look up, I'm not familiar with the sound actually, so I'm going to just kind of see what they, how they describe it, and then I can tell you how it's different. Because it's a different symbol for the English one, but sometimes it's just the context thing. So let me, uh, 
mais euh... oui, bien. All right, the voiceless alveolo palatal sibilant fricative. Um, alveolo palatal. Um, Let me just see if it's trying to see how it's be distinguished from the sound I'm familiar with, which is uh, this is the English one. Um, post alveolar, palatal alveolar, and this, and then the other one was um, <laughs> palatal alveolar and alveolo palatal. Yeah, so it's basically, um, let me see if I can, I can show where it is. Uh, I'm speaking which one comes first. Basically, when it comes to making a consonant sound, there's three features. There is the, um, so a consonant is when you block airflow in some kind of way. So what you're looking at is where are you blocking airflow? You know, what part of your tongue is coming in contact with part of your mouth? And then how is it being blocked? Is it being completely blocked? Is air being allowed to pass through? Um, and then is the voice box on or off? So place of articulation, manner of articulation, and phonation, right? So um, this phonation and um, manner is the same. So it's a, uh, they're both uh, fricatives, sibilant fricative. But where they're differing is the placing of the tongue. So this is palatal alveolar. That is domed, partially palatized. So your hard palate is a, a hard part of the roof of your mouth where you like get burnt when you have teeth, te when you eat pizza. Mm -hmm. um, so it's articulated with the blade of the, this is the English one. So the English one, you're, you're using the blade of the tongue, which is uh, not the tip, but just beyond the tip, the flat part here. Shh and you're placing it behind the over alveolar ridge, and then, the, and then the front of the tongue is domed at the palate. So you're going, shh, that's the position for that one. Here it's saying post-alveolar, meaning the tongue contacts the roof of the mouth in the area behind the alveolar ridge, and the tongue shape is laminal, meaning that is the tongue blade that contacts the roof of the mouth, and it's heavily palatized, meaning the middle of the tongue is bowed and raised toward the bar. So I think what's really going on, so you see the different tongue position here, this, 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 sorry, different tongue shape here. Mm -hmm. Very similar, but slightly different tongue shape. This one sounds to me is going to be, um, so here's the English one. Sha, a sha. This one. Sha, a sha. Yeah, so it's very similar. What's, I think the main thing you're looking at here is this middle part of the tongue is uh, bunching up more to reach the hard palate. So if I do the English one, it'll be sh. This one might be more. So really, you're just kind of focusing a little quick practice. If you say E, e. and then you um, say yeah, yeah, yeah. And then to make the E sound, the middle part of your tongue is getting really close to your hard palate. If you just raise your tongue up until it touches, E. Yeah, so that, that part of your roof of your mouth, ee, that part there, combined with the tip of your tongue, is it. Okay. But, yeah, but really it's so close that, um, yeah, just, just pay attention to when people say it and then see if you can know the difference. Okay. Uh, but anyways, yeah, but we have the sh sound, the sh, sh, and then back to our word. We have a p. So just say that first. Psh, psh. All right. Actually, this so this this sound too. Always make sure this this sound. So this sounds different from this one. This is the only one that we went over. And then this one is going to be. Uh, this right here. So we'll just do a quick run. Yeah. So it's not like you have two really similar sounds. 
the retroflex. All right, that's right. So uh, Polish. So yeah, once you have a bunch of words to work with, then you have some samples of like, oh, okay, I can hear a bit of a difference now. Right. Um, All right, so then. Shum. 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 All right, so we have our. Shum. All right, so now we have our pieces here. We have. What's going to be difficult is, so what you want to do is kind of break this into pieces and all the different combinations and make sure you can do each one. Yep. So for example, uh, if I get rid of the P here, and then actually and I get rid of this one here, and I say uh, esh, 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 and then I try to add the, and then I can do this, uh, sh, sh, that's that retroflex bunch up one, sh, yeah. right, and then, I'm doing, I'm starting with the bunch up tongue one shh and ending with the shh, 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 shh. So I'm going shh, 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 shh. And in between that, I'm making the vowel sound. So it's shh, shh, shh. Shh, shh. Exactly, shh, shh. Yeah, so the way I would practice this one is really practice, I'll just put it, practice um, alternating between if you can figure out what these two sounds are, and once again, even, I would recommend even just like looking inside your husband's mouth and like that helps a lot and just like seeing how he's bunching his tongue differently and stuff. But the, you know, uh, you know, alternating between uh, this one's first actually between these two, yeah. that's difficult. So once again, right, and then. Um, then you can practice once you have that alternation um practice uh flowing a vowel in between so it's shush right and then once you have that done then i'm just gonna smack a p up in front of it and it's shush 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 you know you know, even that's awkward for me because my first time doing that combination of sounds. Right. Uh, but that's that's how I would do it. I just break it, and if I do repetitions, eventually that movement becomes a practiced movement. Right. Shush, shush, shush. All right, boom. Now I have one syllable. Now I gotta do it again for the next syllable. Uh, this sound here, I think we covered already, was a. No, we didn't actually. So let me just get an example from that word, so I have a reference point. Um, Polish. All right, this word. Chma. All right, so now I have, now I'm back to my trouble word and I'm saying che, che. Che. All right, so that one's pretty straightforward. Um, and then this is going to be a uh, ra. So I might practice chira, 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 and then um, this is gonna be a, this. Uh, du, uh, okay, so dua, dua, So can you say chira dua? Chira dua. Let me just bring the word back up. So we hear that's how it sounds at the end. Prześcieradło. Cieradło. 
All right, so that's good. So it sounds like the second part you have, Chidadwa. Chidadwa. Yeah. Chidadwa. Yeah. It's Chidadwa. definitely the beginning that, that is, was really hard for me to hear the differentiation on the sounds. Exactly. So now you, so now you have it because now you actually have all yeah. these things. So you see, I can kind of like triangulate it and say, like, okay, which sound is this? And you go back to your list and you're like, oh, it's like this. Now, but now you have 15 words with that. So you can start to own it in even more. Yes. Um, so yeah, I would practice this one as like, uh, you know, you have this pshesh, once you have this pshesh thing down, yes. then you have chadadwa, chadadwa, then it's just like, think about like two different words, pshesh, yeah. chadadwa. Pshesh, yeah. Pshesh, yeah, so, so here's, so it sounds like if you, so say chadadwa again. Chadadwa. Yeah, so, um, say it one more time. Chadadwa. All right, good. So, sound like this one sounds good. Imagine now there's this, a space. Now say, uh, shesh. Okay, so, um, okay, I think I, I think what's going on. So you're saying, you're saying, pshesh. just say, pshesh. Chiradwa. Chiradwa. Now say, pshesh, chiradwa. Pshesh, chiradwa. Now say, pshesh, chiradwa. Pshesh, chiradwa. And now listen to it. Pshesh, chiradwa. Pshesh, chiradwa. You got it now? Yeah, so at, well, yeah, I think it's that transition from the second the sh to the sh that's weird because we don't do that in English. Exactly. So, so what you want to do is put like a mental break there. So, right. like just chadadwa, just chadadwa. Yeah. And then, and then you just keep closing that temporal gap to just chadadwa. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, so I just recorded that process I just went through. That breaking it down is the process you can apply to any word. You just cool. you just think about it as a sequence, and you're like, oh, I'm saying these things. Where am I getting tongue tied? Your problem point was actually transitioning from this sound to this sound. Right. And then, and then you just do it slow, and then close the gap, and then boom, now you're good. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I think uh, yeah, that's a pretty good start. So yeah, I'd say, I'd say for you once again. Um, build out these lists and uh, then you have your reference points. And what's, when you, what you're doing when you build out these lists and then you build out your trouble words to practice with and you keep cleaning those up. Yes. Um, quick comment on these trouble words. Um, the thing about these sounds is notice how you actually could say chiradwa easily. Um, it was that transition from the, from the sh to, the, uh, to this right. that was cutting off. And then because you tripped up here, uh, I kind of think about it like, um, you know, if you're dancing, for example, and you trip up a step, you don't only trip up that step, you trip up the next step and then the whole song afterwards and the whole, right. and then the, then the person behind you dancing falls over and then there's this huge like domino kind of effect that happens. Sure. You know, um, if what happens is, you know, this is one word out of a million different words, right? However, this transition is going to show up in like probably thousands of different words. Right. And once you nail this transition, you've actually mastered 10,000 new words automatically. You know cool. what I'm saying? Yes. So what I, what I do is if I'm speaking and I always find myself getting stuck on a word, then um, sit down, break it down and fix it. And you're not just fixing that word. You've now just unblocked. It's kind of like a car, like a, like a traffic jam. You just unblock that, remove that car off the road. And right. then, traffic's flowing properly again you know so Excellent. this will this will make a huge impact if you just put in those those efforts so uh, any advice to like so we're going to be there uh, i'm just going to be there 10 days this time but so is there anything that either in terms of of listening to people or tv or whatever or in terms of how to engage people because obviously everybody there who i see pretty much knows me and so they they make a big effort to speak english um but with this um, desire for us to learn how to speak Polish, anything that you've done that's been helpful to kind of engage people or, or engage your listening differently to be able to pick stuff up differently? Oh, did we freeze? Uh, hey, can you hear me? Yep, now I hear you. Yep. Yeah, sorry, my, my computer died. It's on my phone now. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, 
Yeah, so what I would say, if you're going to be in the environment for 10 days, um, first thing is beforehand, it will really work. It'll really help out a lot to like um, get this list started and yeah. then listen to Polish and start, um, and then having those sounds organized in your head ahead of time, because then that way you'll have something to pay attention to while you're there and you'll be able to mimic more. Um, but sense. second, more practically, you'll, you'll, I imagine meeting all the different in-laws and whatnot, there's going to be conversations that you're going to have repeatedly. Um, so I would think about what that would be. And then I would, um, what I would do is um, make what I call kind of micro scripts. So just kind of like write out what it is you want to say mm -hmm. in English in a full sentence, get your husband to um, translate it, record his um, saying of that phrase. Okay. Um, go through and listen to it. If you can't even break it down to these um, IPA symbols that you kind of will become more familiar with here. Yep. Uh, <coughs> and, then, and that way you know what each and every sound was in a recording. And then just kind of like try to practice memorizing those. And um, so like, it's like little short phrases that you want to say because people are, if they're going to be in the habit of speaking to you in English. So maybe you want to come and say, hey, I'm really practicing Polish right now you um can you speak with me right now if i say that with the you know busted grammar and busted pronunciation then they'll be like yeah really right but if like if i perfected that phrase and then i come and say it to them they're like whoa wow you really have improved it right. you said that whole sentence perfectly now they're actually going to be more like subconsciously incentivized to speak to you Makes more sense. and give you opportunities so that's that's what i'd say is like um that process of this figuring out things you're going to say usually um, on a normal basis and then getting them perfected so you can pull them out whenever you need is yeah. a very, a very powerful technique. Cool. All right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Very, this is super helpful. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, when do you guys go to Poland? Um, my, we leave tonight. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, so yeah, this recording should be uploaded to the cloud soon enough. So I'll send it to you today and then, um, Hopefully you can download it and, and maybe your, your son can watch it and then, um, yeah, and then let, let me know how it turns out. I will indeed let you know how it goes. Right, thank great. you so much for this. This is amazing. Yeah, for sure. No worries. So, well, thank you for participating as well. I think it would be useful for people as well who are watching. And uh, great. So awesome. I'll catch you next and safe flight then, yeah? Thank you so much. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. All right. Great. Take care. Right. Take care. Bye-bye.